call a special meeting to order. We got uh, 60601. All right. Now, I didn't see an agenda went up for this one. This the agenda is, is only the FY20 budget. Exactly. So. Um, could I just say that we have here um, David Pierce, member of the Board of Selectmen in town, and Bruce Bennett, member of the Finance Committee, and I'm not sure if another one or two may still arrive, but um, I, I uh, suggested that it would be good if they could attend, and I was just going to ask that um, they be allowed to participate in whatever conversation we have and you know, without worrying about what the public comment period might or might not be or something like that, please. Um, by all means, we're going to handle it. Okay, yeah. good, yeah. good, okay. I assume that was the case, but I just wanted to say so. I think Tom might show up, but he's, got a, he's at another meeting. Yeah, he might probably okay. Well, that's where we draw the line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two is fine, but that's it. Three, okay. Okay. Open meeting. <laughs> <laughs> open discussion. You start to outnumber us. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to do a minute for the last meeting? Review and approve the minutes for the last meeting. So, uh, I'll move that we do so. I'll second. You can table it too if yeah. you don't have them. Hmm? So you can table it because the ones you emailed out. Email yeah, yeah, I emailed them out. Yeah, yeah. There were no changes. So. Yeah. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Unanimous. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, there's the third person. Oh, that's yes. <laughs> Elliot Crow from the fin chair of the Finance Committee. Thanks for coming, Elliot. Thank you very much. Now on to the FY20 budget. <clears throat> All right, well, I suppose you're turning it over to me, and then I'm going to turn it over to parts to Judy. Um, so it's still, as you know, a work in progress as we have a. Um, a large deficit to overlook to, to overcome and how we're going to approach it so we, we have some ideas tonight to, to start to pluck away um, and we're hoping to also talk with the different town committees um, finance and select board um, to hopefully pass along um, we've had some conversations outside of this meeting some individual ones that is just letting people know what's going on um, so let's you know make sure they Please do ask questions as we go, or if anything that comes up, um, do so. But um, I guess I'll hand it to Judy to kind of walk through where we're at now. Sure. Um, you know, we haven't, we don't have the magic, magic wand here and made the problem go away. So I'm sorry we have to start with that, but um, expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I, it is. We also um, we did you know just kind of passing on. Ben and I met with his staff this morning. As well, just to let them know what's going on, just to make sure there's transparency and that you know, there's a community whose lives are affected by this. And so we wanted to make sure that they were up to speed what's going on. So the first thing is in, in the paper or on the mm -hmm. on the television or that kind of thing. So we just kind of communicated that kind of thing. That is a it is a marathon of a process with many steps and many players and a lot of moving parts. And um, I think we all kind of recognize that, but we shared that this morning. Um, and so I guess with that, I'm going to ask you to kind of jump in and walk sure. through where we're at now, and then we can talk a little bit about directions we can go and right. different ideas from there. Um, <clears throat> we are in a perfect storm of three issues uh, at the moment. One is a school choice issue. Uh, the second is the need for an extra classroom teacher um, for sixth grade here. Um, and uh, the third issue is just trying to figure out a lot of different moving parts with the budget and, and how things are, are kind of going. So um, some of the, any one of those single elements we could probably address and take care of, but put it all together and that's where we're, we're at. So um, Let's talk first, I guess, about the uh, school choice issue. That would probably be the way to start. Um, and on page four in the packet that I gave you all, um, I did some um, analysis of where we are with school choice. And um, we have um, you know, a reconciliation with the town uh, showing a balance forward of $122,180.49. Um, there are some accrued payrolls that get paid over the summer months that are really belong to FY18 uh, to the tune of almost $26,000. Uh, 
um, leaving a net balance going forward of about $96,198.77. The anticipated revenue um, for this year is $320,372. That's down $14,220 from what the state originally told us. Um, the big number for the state is the October 1 count of how many students are actually physically in the district and how many students can be claimed as school choice incoming for the purposes of revenue. Um, and it's a December adjustment that happens midstream. And so that adjustment has already taken place, so there's a $14,000 problem now. Um, and then um, moving forward, um, that $320,000 number is what they carry into the preliminary look-see on the cherry sheets for FY20. Um, what we discovered had happened was that originally for FY18, the number was $390,518 for revenue coming in. The December adjustment was down to $334,592. That was not picked up. And so budgets were made predicated on $56,000 more than really was available to spend. For two, or, and it was magnified because it was then applied to the, the, the following, following year, year as well. Correct. So we're sort of in this place where, you know, we've had this, this issue that, that, you know, as I did my investigation as to where we were at and what things were looking at, this is what um, surfaced um, with regard to that. So. Um, so we actually have a school choice deficit now um, that we're working to try and eradicate. And uh, Ben has frozen parts of his budget so that we can use some funds to be able to take care of that. Um, so if you look down a little bit uh, further, you can see both budgeted and anticipated um, expenses to the end of this fiscal year in school choice. So we're looking at teacher salaries to the tune of $148,000, uh, kindergarten teachers to $48,000, uh, instructional assistants, uh, $91,754, um, special education uh, salaries. We've already done some of this work. The deficit was actually much larger. It was a, like a $50,000 deficit when we first looked at this. So we have decreased um, well, we're going to adjust down what we're actually going to spend from school choice for special education instructional assistance and cover it from other sources. Um, and then the third thing that was not budgeted for in school choice but is a, an expense mm -hmm. that I have estimated based on the information I have at hand is bilingual tutors. Um, and it looks like there would be about $8,700 spent to the end of this fiscal year that was not originally even put into the school choice budget. So when all of that is said and done, the anticipated balance or lack thereof moving into FY20 is $13,000 that we have to find um, to make school choice whole. So that's the current problem. Um, then we look at anticipated salaries and if we were to just sort of walk forward with um, spending plans as they currently are, um, you know, the, that compounds the deficit even further in school choice. So um, that was an initial, this was sort of an initial analysis that I did of school choice <coughs> so that we would have a, a feel for what's going on. Some work has happened in the budget since then, so the, the bottom line for moving forward is better. It's not clear, but it's better. So, um, so how did we get to where we are tonight? Um, I turn your attention to page two, which is sort of a 30,000 foot uh, view of the budget. Um, and you can see that uh, in the area of salaries and, and whatnot that are governed by collective bargaining agreements, um, that we are up 11.28%. Um, um, that includes step increases that um, teachers are entitled to uh, under the contract. So, you know, up to certain points for every year, you go up a step. Um, it also, there is a projected adjustment in there. Um, the district is in, in 
process of negotiating a new contract with both the teachers and the instructional assistants. So I'm not free to talk about what kind of number is in there, but we've put in a conservative placeholder um, for that purpose. Um, the other reasons why um, the collective bargaining number is up uh, is because we have already moved some salaries out of our salary offsets out of school choice and back into the local budget for FY20 uh, in an effort to sort of mitigate against this. There's an additional classroom teacher in that, in that uh, number as well. In the meantime, um, after some pretty painstaking and difficult conversations, um, there is a cut to Spanish. There's a reduction of occupational therapy services from 0.9 FTE to 0.8, and there is a cut of two instructional assistants also in that number. Um, Non-union increases, these are people who are not governed by uh, contracts, um, you know, so these are mostly uh, projected increases in salaries, but there's also been a shift in the cost share uh, actually to the good for Sunderland by a little bit with regard to um, the regional costs. Um, so that has been somewhat helpful. But next year is an unusual year. Usually you factor a 12-month employee salary 52 weeks times five days a year because they get paid holidays and vacation, so it's 260 days. Next year, because of leap year and another day that I can't remember, it's actually 262 days. So all those hourly employees have to be factored by 262 days. It's a, a rare occurrence that it happens, but unfortunately this coming year is the year. And of course it's this year. Yes, <laughs> of all years, this is the one. Um, administratively speaking, these are the people who run um, some things. There is uh, some shifts uh, in terms of increases, cost share changes, Currently, um, I work for a company called The Management Solution, and so we are a contracted service as an interim business manager to the district. So money was shifted from the business manager's salary into contracted services to pay for us to be here. Next year, that will change. So part of that seven, uh, part of, excuse me, that seventy-seven hundred dollars is shifting back to the business, uh, a full-time business manager, and you'll see an offset when we get to the operational costs. Um, another offset we made today um, at the suggestion of one of the school committee members was to use food service revolving, which seems to be in a pretty good place right now, to offset the food service director's salary. So that's been um, taken care of as well. So just to offload again some pressure on the budget. Operational uh, um, costs, again, you can see that uh, because our TMS contract will end with the district on July uh, 31st, um, so that there's some overlap with the new business manager, there's a reduction there, and that's what's feeding um, the business manager's salary uptick. And then you can see some other things. One good thing that did happen, um, we had anticipated a higher transportation cost than we thought. Um, the bids have come in. Um, the bids are pretty reasonable, so there's much less of an uptick in transportation um, for um, Sunderland. Uh, than we had anticipated. And you can see there's various ins and outs operationally. So even just on the local side, we are currently at 8.42% of an increase, in addition to the school choice deficit. And the, and, the school, and the number on the school choice that is relevant here is that 109,000. No, actually it, that I have not updated that sheet, Peter. Thank you for bringing that up. If you look at the very last page, the school choice deficit, we have brought it down to eighty-six thousand five hundred eighteen dollars. So uh, that's not reflected in the school choice budget, page fourteen, all the way at the very end of the whole package. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So we have brought it down from that one old. And that's because rather with some of the. Um, yeah, we'll anticipated expenditures. Right, and more. we're also we've also moved some things back into the budget, so that right. that budget will be adjusted accordingly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But so then the total change you could say that's required to fund it as it stands now is the two nineteen plus the hundred and I'm sorry, two nineteen plus the eighty six. Eighty six, correct. So roughly just over three hundred thousand. Right. So you're looking at, you know, 11 plus percent. Yes. So, 
Um, so that's where that is all at. Um, page three of the package just shows the um, enrollments and what the cost share is. Uh, currently, your cost share to um, the Union Region is 17.27%. Uh, that will drop a little bit to 16.76. Um, and the cost share, um, that's for the superintendent's office, the cost share for just the costs that are borne by the four towns uh, at the elementary level is also down just a tad from 25.95% uh, to 25.84%. So, um, though there are some things there. Um, taking a look at page four. Um, page five is the cherry sheet as it currently stands under um, pages five and six, which is the cherry sheet as it currently stands with the governor's budget, house one. Um, and um, as you can see, um, the chapter 70 number is up a little bit. That's the number we're sort of looking at in terms of revenue and thinking about. Traditionally, the legislature has upped the governor's number. Um, but obviously that has to go through that process in order for us to know, you know, where we stand with Chapter 70. Um, there is a significant move in the legislature right now to better fund the changes to the foundation formula than the governor has. The governor has a seven-year plan to get us to get the state to where the foundation commission has recommended that it be. Um, but the legislature is trying to be more aggressive. Where that all comes out at the end of the day and what the governor does with all of that, you probably won't know till June 30th or after. So, yeah. but that's uh, where we stand. As you can see, uh, you can see the decrease in school choice uh, receiving tuition um, that I talked about a little bit earlier. And then there's the other, um, you know, incomings from uh, general government aid. And that 320 there, that's from this year's? Yes, that, that is, whatever Not, the December adjustment is, that's what they carry forward to the first iteration of the FY, mm -hmm. of the next fiscal year. Of the year. next yeah. fiscal year, yeah. right, right. Mm -hmm. So the reality, it could end up being more than that in the end, but that's what we have to work with based on. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And I've already noticed um, payment-wise that um, the payments for that decrease have already started to happen. It started in December. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, because they've been paying you at the 334000 rate, it actually is lower right. to make it all to come compensate. Out. Yeah, exactly. So, school finance. A lot of fun, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> On page six, you can see um, the assessments as the charge sheet uh, currently stands. Um, the good news is that uh, school choice. Uh, mm -hmm. The bad news is that school choice sending tuition is up. The good news is that charter school sending tuition is out. So um, charter school sending tuition is based on full freight of what your per pupil expenditure is here. Uh, it's not like school choice where it's a flat 5000 and then if there are special education costs, like those get added in uh, and build back yeah. to the sending district. But uh, charter, charter is the whole thing. So if you look at the net change in uh, revenue versus um, it, uh, assessments, you're down a couple of thousand dollars, um, you know, town-wide. Town yeah. So, um, and then the back page is sort of the detail that supports this. This is the line item budget um, mm -hmm. for the school committee. Just so that you understand how we organize budgets at TMS, we have a column called All Funds which represents expenditures that are borne by both the local and offsetting sources. So if you're looking to compare last year to this year, I would say use the two blue columns because the pink column represents um, more funds than that. And if you look particularly on page 9, you'll see the offsets and you'll see how things um, have been accounted for. So you can see where school choice is offsetting um, salaries uh, Title I, you can see where uh, some of our special education grant or uh, special education revolving or early childhood revolving, and then we've got some miscellaneous revenue um, that we've put out there because of the shift today of putting the um, food service uh, director's salary, which is uh, yeah, page 
well, there it is, um, into the food service uh, revolving account. And now you can see that that offset is there as well. So before we did that, this was an 8.73% increase. So it's brought it down to 8.42. So with that, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And yeah, what are we going to do? <laughs> and then there's where you fell. I turned that back over to the superintendent. <laughs> and you folks. <laughs> but I don't, think, I don't think turning in an 11% increase is going to be met with hurrahs mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. you know, people putting together the whole town picture. Right. Well, by all means. From what I understand from this, the school choice money, some of it is used, being used to fund four teachers that are currently employed? Um, they're funding parts of different teacher salaries. Basically, it figures out the four full yeah. time equivalents. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's another issue that has, well, to, actually, be, has mm -hmm. to be looked at because that money is not guaranteed money. Well, it's not and, quite four, right? It's, yeah, it's not. It's, it's not quite four. Two hundred. But anyway, it's a lot. Uh, the oh, because <laughs> in the gardens. One forty-eight and forty-seven. Yeah. Well, it's always a risk with school choice. I mean, you know, well, that's what I'm saying. Is, is you know that has to be looked at. Well, right. This in, is in not a picture. As you've been at these, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> for a long time, so we all have. And uh, um, yeah, we've been talking about this for years since you know uh, we 2008 eight, nine, nine um, when the bottom fell out, and um, yeah, we we been using school choice in, you know, ways that we would rather not. Okay. And, and, and been creeping into the current year's budget rather than spending it in a full year in arrears. And the school choice money coming in is, or the school choice, yeah, the school choice money coming in is not being used to create new positions. These are positions that would exist regardless right but if all of a sudden it. we had a, 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 a resident tuition a resident population yes increase increased. then that school choice money would disappear because we wouldn't be taking school it's, choice people in 100 percent correct so that yeah. is is, is a, it's a long-term debt that's not being funded mm -hmm. yeah. is the way that i look at it yeah mm -hmm. exactly right mm -hmm. and we've been seeing the air go out of the shock absorbers uh, across the years that we've been trying to move as much as we can off of school choice funding, recognizing that the town is growing, recognizing that the, our capacity to even bring in kids for choice is, is working its way down. Um, but although ironically, I mean, what's part of what's why it's still been up is we've been having um, incoming classes in kindergarten that are bigger than what we would want to have in one classroom but not two full classrooms, which is why we continue to be bringing in five-ish um, right, school choice kids a year. Yeah. Um, but that could change. And then, I mean, it wouldn't change like it would, I mean, uh, I mean, unless all the people that were in higher grades also decided to move out, but it would be, if it just was the kindergarten, we start taking more in because it just fit right. Uh, one way or the other, then it would be a, a gradual taper off of that, but, but you know, over time, significant. So this is, this is essentially, this is one of the main consequences of relying so heavily on this then is because of an error being carried over here that were, you know, our previous budget calculated for higher school choice and that's contributing to this this issue this year. Mm -hmm. If we were spending a year in arrears where we could absorb some of that, then there would be a different story. We'd have, we'd have time to figure it we'd out. We'd have more time to figure it out, to deal with it, because we could we could <coughs> spend into that buffer and and you know and and uh, and try to figure figure it out over more time. But because we've already used that we're buffer. Spending this year's money this year. Right. So then this, it, right, and this is the same problem that other schools in our, in our 
union or, or greater district are having the same problem, which when they're starting to spend school choice in the year that's being done, Waitley is in a similar problem, just not as much. And in the, some of the perfect storm things that happened this year is that also um, within our um, Horizons program, our, our uh, special ed program that we have here, we have two tuition students who are graduating. And they bring in a substantial amount of money to offset the cost of that program. So you have that happening the same year. So you have it. So we had that. We you know we were going to have to adjust for that going as well. So that's another kind of you know um, poorly timed event at the same time. So the the error alone is again probably it would have been absor could have been absorbed alone in this year um, through budget freezes and other kind of administrative. Um, you know, actions without affecting programming. Um, but you throw that, you know, um, close to $100,000 of, um, that's probably on school choice, but um, you get $5,000 for school choice and then you get the SPED increment on top of that. So you're talking about an extreme amount of SPED increment that is included in that number as well that's going out the door through just, you know, and we haven't been able to find other, and we're trying to find other students that could come into that program. It's a good program. and but. It's based on need, and every school is trying to adjust the amount of school students going out. Just the same reason we created that program to stop money from going out. Other schools are catching up in the area and are having less students going out. So that's not a um, an ongoing revenue source that um, you can plan on for. They, they, for they can plan on because other schools are adapting to that. You know, they're such creating. a good competition for that market. Exactly. Right. But you have the. By having that program, you then also can take care of your own kids right. who have special, real, yeah. you know, significant and special needs, needs, and you're not then saying, "Oh, we got to send somebody out at a really big number." And yeah. and once again, the, the revenue coming in for SPED revolving is supporting students across the school, not just the handful that would be in that special program. But is, isn't that the risk we're talking about with choice in? We're, un we're underwriting. We're underwriting the global operating expenses of the elementary school through special programs. That's exactly right. So if, if if that's the case, when do we take a step back and go? What does an ideal efficiency look like that says that program didn't work? We may have pick a number in any given year that's outflowing, and then those expenses end when student X moves on. So here we're underwriting a program, right, across the total expenses of the elementary school, and when it, when, when it hits the fan, it lands on the town. Right. And who knows what that town well, piece looks like in the future. Underwriting, underwriting a program, you mean... Uh, Us, using, using what Ben just said, using revenues from programs across the expense schedule of the school. It's not. It's not. It's not specific, right? It's yeah. not linear. I think. It's, so it's, it's, I think it's, it's more that. I think Ben's point is more that uh, it's not just those students that benefit right. from the, you know the aids or, or that are in the classroom, you know, so that other students sure. benefit. I. Yeah. I'm not sure that we would have. That we would have made the you know that, we, that the same aids would be in the, you know the classroom if it weren't for that. Sure. Un un precipitating me, right. but understood. Yeah. Again, in an ideal model. Yeah. What does it look like with these up outside resources coming in that we're having to pick the noise up, at least in this current budget? Exactly. And this noise comes triennially, every five years, every eight years, turns into a big bump. <clears throat> no, that, that's exactly right. Um, I know where you've been on, on this issue year over year, and you're always for making sure that our, uh, our revenue stream is adequate to support what's going out. Sure. Right? Yep. Uh, and keep those in balance. What we've been seeing in terms of what the town has been able to generate in terms of revenue mm -hmm. is there's there's been a gap between the rising needs of the school mm -hmm. and uh, the rate at which we're able to get funding from all sources of revenue. All sources. All right. sources. Right. Yep. So, you know, stay across the board, mm -hmm. um, and we've been eating into that shock absorber. Right. which is the school of choice. Mm -hmm. And now you're absolutely right. Now that that shock is over, it's down to nothing, we feel every bump in the road directly to the budget. Fair. Well, and it's also the challenge in general of where do you allocate school choice money? Yeah. Because, you know, it, 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 
I understand the challenge because you can make the academic argument that you shouldn't be putting that towards regular ongoing costs. But then where do you where do you allocate those? Got to go to something, exactly. right? Exactly. So, and that's always right. a challenge. Right. I think the other. I get that. I think that also you mentioned the word trying to be efficient, mm -hmm. and one of you know a, a basic problem you have in trying to run a school this size sure. is that you have, you know, for example, the the goal class sizes for. I think kindergarten up through second are like 18 kids, and first third up through sixth there's like 20 kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you've only got you know what we have generated from Sunderland is usually something around 25 to uh, 30 kids a year, something right. like that. So then it's a question of you know how do you you've got a kindergarten class that's going to have 25 or 30 kids, then taking in some school choice kids does not require additional teachers, does not require additional classrooms, it requires, you know, a modest bit of supplies or, minimal. you know, minimal cost, but that is a, you know, doing that is a, an attempt to get to your more efficient numbers. And if you look at some of the class sizes right now as they move through, for example, this current year our sixth grade is right about 40 kids, okay? Our fifth grade is right about 20. We haven't been accepting any school choices for that class if it's moved through the system because, you know, we were trying to keep the number where we sure. can handle it with just one classroom. But isn't it also a reality, Peter, that unless you're coming in on the, on the front side, you're less likely to choice in in five, six, four, etc. True, but people move, it happens. We just, yeah. I totally get it. Yeah, we, we, just, we have a dynamic we just We have the option each year of, of only offering up places, a certain number of places in specific yeah. grades. We yeah. see much fewer... Yeah school choice applications for the upper grades than we do right, for right, right. K-1. Which makes right. sense. Right. Right. Yeah. You want to get in early. So, but it's still, you get, an, you get an attempt to get a more efficient mm -hmm. uh, you know, class size, right. utilization of your teachers in Correct. your classrooms and so on. Um, you know, just generally getting back to Bruce's thing, I look at, you know, you could say the mistake that was made last year in, you, in what number did we have available for revenue. Had we had the correct number, okay, then you say, well, I mean, you can't change anything that happened. Right. You can look back and try and learn from it. You say, well, what, what might have happened had we known that our available revenue from school choice was going to be something between fifty and seventy thousand dollars less? Mm -hmm. And then you've got, you know, generally you got two ways you can go. And you know, given last year's situation, okay, you can, you know, chop that chunk out of the budget, okay. Or there was a bunch of discussion at several selectmen meetings about the override and mm -hmm. about what size the override. You know, ought to be. And the year before, it had been 300000 and you all settled on 200000 Sure. You know, I'm looking back at that and saying, well, you know, would we have ended up chopping fifty to 70000 out of our budget? Or would we have said, you know, that 300000 that we asked for the year before that failed just by a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, was really a pretty good number, and probably that's what we ought to go back to again now. Who knows what would have happened at the bowl? Sure. Who knows whatever? This is all right. just right. history. You can't do anything. Right. But it's, oh boy, it's annoying. Sure, it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's just annoying. really annoying because I think mm -hmm. that we had, a, you know, this is a really good school and, mm -hmm. you know, it just needs resources because it's got a lot of kids that need resources. Sure. And um, I think the town, you know, there are lots of people in town that, that accept, realize that and accept that and are willing to pay for that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, part of what ticks me off is I think last year that we could have, you know, whether it was something between 250 to 300 for an override and we could have passed it, okay? And then, you know, and, and, and we would have been, we still would have been here dealing with the fact that we need another teacher, okay? And we still would have been dealing with the fact that we need uh, to figure out what's going on with Horizon program, okay? But we wouldn't be where we were with the school choice issue. Sure. Okay, and that's, it. but uh, the thing is, you can't change what happened, okay? Right. And it's still going to be, you know, it's not like, you talk about, well, we got to wean ourselves off of this thing. Well, weaning ourselves off of this thing would mean, great, you go a year without using any school choice money at all. Is that realistic? Right. No way. <laughs> no way. We're basically, at this point, we're running, you know, current income from the program is you being used for current expenses. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to see how that's going to change. Sure. And you're just going to have to realize that that's, you know, there's a bit of unknown, even though I went looking at the state figures, and they do a pretty good idea of telling you as the year goes on, how things stand, right. okay? And I was, that's why I was, you know, I'm additionally annoyed with this whole thing because if I'd known where to look 12 months ago, it would have been like clear, like this is the wrong number. Sure. But 
you know, you look and you find this stuff out always after. Well, it's, the, after you, the you, you, would, you would have known if it was the headlight of a dump truck or the headlight of a train. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so just to, if I could, to, to Peter's point, if it was a choice made of 200,000 or 300,000 uh, with respect to an override that the, the town voted for, that's irrelevant in a $300,000 increase for the, for the elementary school. Right. That leaves no oxygen for the rest of the town. Right. Zero. Right. Frontier, zero. Right. Franklin right. Tech, right. zero. Highway, zero. Right. Police, zero. Administration. Oh, I understand. I, I just yeah. want, to, I, I want to be on camera saying that. Yeah. Zero. But I think, I mean, I don't know if you, Darius, were you going to talk about, you know, possible things that you've been thinking about, or...? <clears throat> I mean, yeah, so there's... We, we, so we're, you know, we're looking at it, so the next level of cuts starts to affect, you know, starts to affect programming, and then you start that kind of ripple effect. And so, again, like I said, we met, we met with the staff to talk about, we're going to be brainstorming ideas, so, um, you know, throwing things out there, and I say that for the camera, are brainstorming ideas as we toss things around, okay? Mm -hmm. so, and, and so we don't want poor rumors in the community and that kind of thing, but we have to do, you know, Ben has been, you know, instructed Ben to look at everything. And, you know, as we talked about to the teachers say, what does everything mean? It means a dirt floor, one school classroom. Sure. You know what I mean? And so, and then you work your way back from there. Um, and, and by no means do we want to go to that route, but when, when you talk about everything, about you talk about what is the state mandate and those kind of things. And that's not where we want to go, but you got to look at what those costs are within the budget. And so Ben's done that. Um, and at the same time, I'm trying to look at, trying to find creative ways and in which level can we pull things out of the budget for a year and go to the town for free cash to pay for certain things. And, and, and again, this is, again, I'm, I'm looking for, how does this work? I don't know, this is my, sorry, you got a rookie, but it's my first rodeo going through this. But here's my, my, my thoughts on that. It's okay, so we have some teacher retirement buyback um, for 13 and change. 13,342. Um, it's a one-time cost. It's a one-time cost. So that one's a very, that's a very simple one. I think, and actually Sunderland's done that before um, when we had, a, I think we had three teachers retiring at once and it was just kind of those things like, why are we gonna change the budget and that kind of thing? So that was kind of the no brainer, but then that's what kind of got me the trigger of saying, so Ben has frozen the budget for technology this year. We've already done some sp spending, so repairs and some new devices in places, but there was $20,000 left in that account. We froze that account. Um, if we freeze the library computers need um, to be redone, we can get through this year. But the way those software companies work is if you don't update them next year, then they then will not run our virus protection and whatnot. Just a quick question. Do we lease or own those? We own. We own those ones. And a lot of them we are getting are refurbished. So we do a really, you know, and then if we get to that kind of thing and have that conversation, I'd love to have my tech director come in because he can really talk to about why he does he what he does. He's, he's a... He's a he's a good buyer, okay. So we're not just kind of going IBM. Let's click you know click the top box and let's order right. twenty five of them. He's really going through. I, I know in, in budget times in the past we've talked about and it never seemed to gain any traction about looking at, at leasing too mm -hmm. as, as a potential option. What what the cost benefit of that versus purchasing is? And I can get you an answer to that because it might be and especially if it does look advantageous. You know that's something too that uh, I, I could be spread know. across all of the areas in the municipalities to gain even more power as far as purchasing goes? Yep. I know he, he did talk about that the last time he made a presentation to us about the plans, um, and I can't remember mm. exactly what. <coughs> I agree. I know that he had a reason not to be doing it, and, but I don't want to just make up stuff, right, right. you know, uh, in a public meeting. Because I'm thinking of managing it from an IT perspective, yeah. too, and it, uh, you know, kind of like we like to manage noise out of our budget, that kind of would manage some noise out of your IT management as well, potentially. The only thing, the downside is you don't have the flexibility of, let me get one more year out of this machine. <laughs> yep. And I think yeah, the library, I, I would say the library machines, we've gotten a couple more, one more years yeah. out of those machines. There's always um, a downside to something. Yeah. But, so, but I can ask him, you know, I can ask him to kind of throw something, because I know he, it's not going to take him very long to throw it together, because I know he's answering that question all the time. Um, but the idea, so when we go back to the idea, the idea was to, um, the problem is if you cut the line item, then it's a false budget moving forward. 
Right, and so and, and help me yeah, through this. Right, so no, right, no, so no, we no, in no, Judy no. and I were talking about like freeze the line item. What does that look like? And she says we're using an alternate funding source, which would be, which would be the town. Okay, which I know the town's not an alternate funding source, but you know a different, a different pile revenue, revenue stream, stream within the town. And purchase the technology that where there and freeze a twenty five thousand dollar line. And if there's any other immediate repairs to get through next school year again we're looking at this of keeping not affecting programming in the school you know what i mean for the most part and so you're trying to make sure that every student in the especially in the upper level grades have access to computers for their technology and instruction and that kind of stuff and so that they don't lose a classroom worth of computers that we continue to try to keep well, level they take the mcas on the they do computers. take the mcas yeah. on there right right, right, right. we don't have to, have to have them right? we don't have to bus them to another school in order to get the computers they need um which probably could be an idea but um no take that away in front of the camera <laughs> the, uh, but so that was the so there again there was the idea so that was that's a twenty five thousand dollar line item again we can also play with that number and bring that down in the sense of looking at the actual costs projected for next year but that is our hardware line item within that, that and that's please, our for, for this year it was um pen that we would replace the computers in the lab but then also have some leftover cash in that fund for just general repairs that come up you know, yeah. right. Year. Smart board right. fails. Right. You know exactly. that kind of thing. You know. Yeah. Yeah, but, but just what kind of money we're we talking there anyway? It's twenty five. That's twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five k. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so again, that's where I was there, and then the last line was the general repair in the building. I mean, I, don't know, can I, I can see Scott shaking his head. I know I'm starting to push the envelope there, but I'm trying to get creative and trying to figure a way of doing that. Can we forecast what the general repairs are for the building and treat that more like a capital expenditures, again, freezing that line or taking, again, I'm looking for other ideas, but that's a way to, I'm trying to find another way to get another revenue stream into help us out with this particular year. Yeah. in a way that it's not saying I know it's offloading the budget but doing it in a way where it's very clear very transparent you know as we you know and you know for obviously from day one next year we're gonna be building the budget you know very early yeah. um, and um, you know trying to correct that year long and try to get us into a better place it may take us more than one year to get us because our school choice you want to be at an excess of it and in this school is probably even higher but you know we we're talking about I had the auditor looking at Waitley, which is in a similar position. He said, you need $50,000 in excess at your end of your in-school choice mm -hmm. because you can't be riding that close to the yep. line because if you lose, you know, um, you lose two students because they moved and we do, you know, um, they, you know, the neighboring town, but they moved from the neighboring town to Connecticut. Um, and so they no longer can school choice here. That's, you know, two students, that's $10,000 without any spending increments. Um, you don't want to be... Yeah. Then you're ten, you know, you're ten thousand dollars short in your budget that year, starting off your school year. So you really have to have a buffer where the committee agrees that we have to make sure, as part of our budget, there is a fifty thousand dollars surplus at the end of every year at school choice. Mm -hmm. So we have to be working toward that because we started spending year, not instead of a year in the rear. We have been spending year up. Well, yeah, I mean, we before the 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 um, the era there. We did still have, I think we were getting to where we were below the, we, I think this year we were going to end below at like 30 or 20 or, uh, well. 20-ish. Yeah yeah. 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 So it was, we were below that. We weren't quite at uh, down to zero, was, but then we this. Well, you know, the, the problem with, the problem, is the tuition in considered, do you know if that's tied in? Do you know if the tuition in was considered part of school choice number? Uh, no, for no, the rest. No. So that was a separate tuition. Yeah, yeah, separate. Yeah. That yeah. is a separate yeah. one. All right. um, I was going to say because that would compound. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. as well. So. Um, but yeah. But yeah. regardless, I mean, Regard honestly, but that's I mean, a healthy budget. That's what you even, want. Right. And, 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 and it's probably like 50 is kind of like the lowest to you. you want to even think about having that line at. Right. I mean, you look at the error because that's the one thing that we could certainly point fingers at. 
but understand without the air we're still at we're still, we're still at nine yeah, yeah. right it's you know what I mean just your hole isn't quite as deep it's not yeah. quite as deep and it's right. a, yeah, you're at right, the edge right. of the cliff instead of over it right yeah. so well, that's exactly right you can we, see over the top we of the expect hole. to be <laughs> at the edge of the cliff you can tell what's it's coming not, yep. expect to be, um, right. especially with the, the teacher the need um, I don't right. want to say the teacher but the need for an additional classroom right yeah. you, know, you want to say it's a person yeah. because we want to make that the a negative. You don't want to say a teacher you can do that a negative within this kid, within a budget. Um, yeah. All right, so that's where I started thinking down that road, and, and I don't. And then the other question is with you know with finance committee here, uh, at least representative of the finance committee here, is what what percentage point do you want us? It is. I know it's fluctuating. You're looking at your other towns' needs. Is like where do we have to try? Where do we have to get it to to make it even reasonable? And I know that's a dangerous thing to say, but at the same time, I don't, you know, we have to have have a goal because... uh, Let's mount the problem. Right, because we have to, at this point, we're going to start cutting things that could, that will. I'm trying to... I'm trying to finagle it. It's going to impact programming and impact kids. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, we don't want to overcut by far. You know what I mean? We're a surgeon at this point. You don't make the, the, the incision bigger than it has to be. And so that's... That was a good analogy. I'll work with that. So... I know we're working against a time deadline, right? And I, I just want to understand too, because this, it's just one more parameter to understand where the knobs are and, and how far we can turn them. I know we ran into an issue at one point with uh, minimum per pupil spending, right? So it would be good to know what, you know, what the foundation. 11% is where we're at, you know, nine, where could we end up without getting into trouble with the state? So a couple of questions along those lines. How, how far are we above minimum contribution currently? Mm-hmm. Right? Good P- pretty, Good pretty, yeah. pretty simple question. If we're paying, I'll make a number up, 1.1% above foundation, then there's an obvious argument you made, oh, all right, you get a you know, town chaponi up more. Yeah. If, if we're paying 2.1% or you know, twice foundation, yeah. well, there's a very different discussion about cost structure and overhead, yeah. right? That's just reality. Absolutely. Um, if I could circle back to the choice numbers for just a second, if, am I to understand we have 64 choice coming in based on the revenues? Um, it would depend on whether or not there is a special education. Got event. it. There's some dynamic piece there. Yes, mm-hmm. because an individual student hypothetically right. could be, say, $30,000 coming in with special needs that right. a child moves on to another district. You've lost. Thirty thousand. Well, I understand lost that. Five. I, I want to work across based the, on forty the, kids. The, the choice cap. The yeah, choice cap is more five, like around right? forty. Yeah. Based on forty, it was two hundred thousand for got it. five thousand each, and one hundred and twenty for the spending increase. Got it. Thank you. And and that that net across the population is two hundred fifty eight enrolled based on the numbers that I see in the first. Two hundred thirty students enrolled. Two thirty currently. Correct. Yep. And the percentage of choice, both special or other, is what? So 10 percent. Uh, it's getting on towards uh, 20 percent. Yeah. So 20 percent into the two thirty. So I, I would I would 16, I would ask 18 18 percent something like that. Yeah. Okay. I, I would ask I would ask it, at some point is there a decision or is there a tipping point is there a tipping point about the the value of choice incoming and its ability to cover the actual operating costs what point does it drive the cost, and what point does it underwrite the cost? At five thousand, at thirty thousand, etc. It's particular when you start talking about eighteen percent of the population. Yeah. Right. And again, if this was if this was a business model, and I know I'm talking in the municipal reign, if this was a business model, someone would go, "Well, wait a minute. There's an operating loss associated with blank." I mean, but you've got in the business model, you would say, "What are our fixed costs and what are our variable costs?" Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and your your fixed cost is, for example, just take any particular grade, and your sure. fixed cost is, you know, you're supporting a, a, a physical classroom and the physical right. staff that works in that classroom. Yep. Okay, and if you add one kid, for example, not much changes. Right. Okay, if you add, you know, at a certain point, suddenly you add enough, and now either maybe you need another aid. Mm-hmm. That would be yeah. probably the first yeah. step. Yeah. Okay, classroom. and then a whole other classroom. Now, and we're we're definitely not at there. This, has, this school is not done there. Has yeah. Deerfield has Deerfield done that? <coughs> <coughs> they need a correction. 
correct a few years ago regarding one class yeah, that where they had, yeah. they had one class of their three classes that was enough enough school choice for one class right so I um, understand that I appreciate what, what and, and then let me add one more thing just please and that is that I had I, I, I had someone you know question how can it make any sense that we're getting five thousand even thinking about fixed costs and variable costs yeah. how can it make how can the numbers really even work out when you're getting five thousand for school choice coming in and our average cost per kid in terms of you know what it costs to educate them is around thirteen to fourteen yeah. okay and then I'd say ah but in fact you're getting five thousand plus the sped increment right okay and depending upon this it, it, what we're looking at right now for that plus the sped increment only lifts it up to around eight thousand. Okay. The numbers I was looking at for a year or two earlier it was more like between nine and ten thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then that's like getting close, aren't you? That's getting a lot closer. And and the person I was telling this to was actually Richard Lepatka, yeah. and we were and he mm -hmm. you know he's no dummy. No. Nope. And he was suddenly like, oh, he says that makes quite a difference. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so then again, when you go back to your what's a fixed cost, what's a variable cost. Yep. You know, I mean, every additional kid is a little more demand on Ben's time, but we don't pay him based on the number of kids in the school. We just expect them to do the right, same right. work. On the other hand, if crops. you get too many of them, you could right. say, oh, hold it, he's diluting the yep. services. The other thing I looked up was um, just mm -hmm. the, the number of kids here at the school mm -hmm. over the last few years. And yeah. I didn't go way back, but I went back like the last eight, nine years. And, you know, back uh, in 11, 12, it was 170, 180. <coughs> 13 was 205, 14 was 205, 15 was 233, 16 was 258, yep. 17 was 238, and this year, October 1st, number was 232. Yep. But, you know, it's you could say, well, in the last two years it's down a little bit, but over the last sure. five to ten years it's up so, quite substantially. Yeah, it's still two plus classrooms, right? right yeah. Across, right. across the whole <coughs> distribution. Right, so then you, you know, and, and you can go back and say, well, you know, how do you do that? You know, I, I don't have the numbers here in terms of what happened to the, our budget over those years, but I'm sure that, I, I, I sort of think that it wasn't reflecting that increase in the population that it was, was being served. I don't know. 219 between 16 and 17, 114 between 17 and 18, and another no. 60 between... 15 and 16, and we, we crawled out of that hole that was right. 2009. Right. And then it and then it started. Right, but then the numbers have come back up again. They come right, right. back up again. Right. Yeah. Then it was another two. Yeah, so it was like a little over in the FY11 when you cited that 172 yep. students. Right. It yep. was at a little over 2 million. Yep. And, and now it's, well, before this, you know, from last year, 2.6. 2. Now you're at 2.6, and then now yep. we're talking well north of that. Right. And but even if you look at the even if you look at the two versus the two growth to the two point six, that's mm -hmm. thirty percent. Right. Okay. Over that time, where you've got, you know, a, a school load that's about gone up by about thirty percent. <coughs> okay. And then you've got cost of living. Right. So. So this is the actual points that the you know, board of selectmen has been making for to the public for right. the last three to four years. <coughs> so you know we we know we have an increasing population. We know we have to adjust. We know we have to compensate for that. Um, this this particular year, this discussion is going to be a little more. There'll be a little more elbows and a little less smiling. Yeah. Right. It's just right. the way it's got to be, uh, because of the available resources. Is it is it, in terms of how we're going to work through this? Um, it seemed to me that one way of doing it was to pick a couple or three certainly more than one sort of goal point on a bottom line yeah. for a budget, mm -hmm. okay, and see what it would take to come in at that number, okay, and then, you know, that gives you a much better idea of, right. you know, what the impact is. Sure. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure, I mean, it just seems to me that if we just say, okay, get it down to two and a half percent or something. I mean, we really need to sort of say, you know, again, pick maybe three right. spots 
Okay, and, and, and you know, one that would be, yeah, okay, that's a reasonable number, and then one that's a real reach, and then one that's maybe a real reach plus, you know, I mean, I don't we know. We would do that with Marty and Patty, and then we'd come up basically scenarios, like, right. this is what this number looks we like. And we gotta, and we gotta, yeah, we got to sort of do something like that, because otherwise, how do you make an intelligent decision? Sure. I, I would, if I could uh, piggyback on what Peter's saying, you can do that for this year, recognizing that that's the new baseline for next year. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's why I'm sitting so here. We, we, yeah. we, we don't we don't see from from and, and you are much closer to the operation. We don't see the the kind of volatility in programs that you that, that you see here in the elementary school. We certainly don't see those costs drop off any given year. Mm -hmm. We we are on a steady trajectory, yes. and it, nothing is down. <coughs> now, I get enrollment, I understand mm -hmm. that piece, but the question, uh, circling back to the percentage of population that is uh, uh, choice or et cetera, mm -hmm. and the reasons behind that have got to be, at some point, a, a discussion about, you know, where's the model, right? What's the actual model that we're working off of here? And to your point, Peter, earlier, we get closer to those cost of attendance makes perfect sense. Right, we're, we're using the resources that are available, the facilities that are available, but the escalation in these costs in particular, and we, outside of transactional things that happen any given year, um, are coming to the point where there's got to be a real discussion. Yeah. So decisions made this year, and it's always a trouble from the selectmen and finance committee's budget perspective. We look at this year as a snapshot. And we don't look back and say, well, this is zero for next year. And this is zero for next year, 2.5%, 3%, 4%, whatever the numbers we, we collectively come up with to support the education programs that are important to the community equal our ability to raise those revenues moving that forward. And so we get to those points year after year after year. You look at, it's like watching a movie one frame at a time. And you spin 10 years of the movie and go, oh, damn. Well, I'm sitting here think, listening to this, thinking, okay, we're talking about a trend line. Well, and my question is, yeah. where is that trend line going? Is it right. continuing to go up? And then I think of the it's larger right. discussion that we're having in the area about, well, we're worried about our population decreases, and we want to increase the population. You know, there's a, there's a lot of interesting factors at well, play here. Yeah, but I mean, part of I mean, <laughs> part of the what we've been trying to communicate, I think, over time is because the narrative overall in this area is declining population. Right. And yet, but it, it, that but has is not been true for not, us, and sure, certainly right. not in, in right. the student population. Exactly. Um, and, and it's not, you know, and it's not because we've, um, because we've, like, grown our school choice. I mean, yes, the, the the, no. just the it's resident, of school. just yeah, I completely agree. Right. right. And, and this, um, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even factoring in school choice. I'm just looking at overall right. demographic. <clears throat> right. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. so it's like, we have to consider that. I think that there is though, get, you know, it is competing against that narrative that is out there, which is true for a lot of Western Mass, that population is is down and the young population is down. Yeah, yeah, it's just closing that, elementary schools. Right. There's an active discussion in, in, in Western Massachusetts. Right. We, we are, guys, we're, we're fortunate or, yeah. we're, we're fortunate to not be having that discussion right. from, this, from the community's perspective. Mm -hmm. From the community's perspective, but then the budget. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's, that's, budget that's another right. animal, you know. <laughs> so in, in, in that same context, and, and as I said earlier, uh, you know, the the, uh, the oxygen's left the budget if you come in at $300,000. Right. To Peter's point and, and to the, the committee's point, uh, the reality is where is the middle ground? I would suggest from our revenue uh, perspective that we haven't found that that spot yet. We, we're not quite there. We have collective bargaining going on in two, two areas. Yes. We have some debt that's being retired, but you, Peter, as you well know, that's, that's linear, that simply comes off. Right. It, it, it doesn't help you at all. Nope. Um, there are uh, relatively few areas of growth. You can't build too many more houses. What, I was just, what about the uh, Sugarloaf thing? The Sugarloaf thing, they right now? It's, it's, they're, uh, so they're grubbing right now. Yeah, we are. They're grubbing right now. Okay. And what's that valuation of the P? 23-odd-ish uh, construction. Okay. So, 
That said, it also represents the opportunity, and we had this point of an argument with the DHCD about the impact on population. The opportunity for a 9% increase in our rental housing stock, our total housing stock, not rental, total housing yeah. stock, has the opportunity to impact the elementary schools. Absolutely. The, state, the state, in its infinite wisdom, does not factor that in <laughs> when they say that's a good project or not a good project. Right. But, but you saw we, we but, had, go ahead. No, I was saying, yeah. But that said, that's, that's it's, I think a concern that you're headed down. Uh, yeah. that, that's not the concern. Right. Because it, it, if you look historically in this time, I've been here a long time, as Peter has been, we went through the same thing back in the 90s where our population was increasing because we're building a lot of houses. Good point. Yeah. You had families moving in. Is that age, you know, people like me, my kids grow up and they move away, but we're selling our houses. And then again, you have a population coming in. Right, the demographics the, the are changing. The demographics yeah. are changing. Yeah. Traditionally in this town, the apartment complexes have not added that many students to, to the school population. I don't think that <coughs> complex down there, because supposedly they're high end. It's more probably less targeted students. more, let's face it, towards well, UMass students. Yes, yeah. and, and be you look at it from a revenue, but I think the baseline that we have to look at is getting back to two classroom teachers in each grade. And, and that baseline we have to keep. Whereas when the population went down in the student population and the budget went down, they said, well, let's get rid of a teacher, let's get rid of a teacher. That was the easy fix. But that's the baseline I think we should be at, because we were at that back in the, what, 2000 or so? Yeah, you, realize, you realize that... Uh, We're not that far from yeah. You realize yeah, that Scott's talking about, you know, looking more than one year at a right. time. Right. We got 20 kids now in the fourth grade. Right. 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 Two years from now, we're going to be in the same situation of saying, okay, for the next budget, we need an extra teacher. classroom, an extra teacher. Yep. Same yep. thing. We're going to repeat this, you know, just we get a year off and then we get to do it again. Yep. We, we have in the low 40s of the number of students across the entire entire town living in apartments coming to Sunderland. Yeah. And, and yeah that's very minimal. That's yeah. But very, so very low. My question is on that, when you look at the new projects that are going up, are, there's only so many, are they increasing the amount of students and grad students at UMass to meet the needs? Now you're looking at the whole development that's gone around Coles. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, how many grad students are going there that will be pulled from the apartments that are now aging? And then what is going to fill the aging apartments right. if it's not going to be students? Sure. It's going to be other families that are going to find the housing and, and, and then... Sure. And, and obviously bring families in. So I'm wondering, is there, I don't know how many apartment units are going up that are gonna be for you know for student level housing and grad students and that kind of thing, and how many are low income in those things. But those are, that's it all, I mean, it's right. slightly closer. It's walking distance to multiple things. It's, right. you know, they're gonna, that's gonna attract sure. the students to move there. And that's, I'm just wondering how that's gonna affect, if that's gonna raise the number of families with, with children to now enter the apartments in town. I was talking to someone that's into the Amherst real estate and stuff, and I, and I believe they said they had to study a year or two ago and there was a need for 15, 1,500 housing units. Okay. And and that's, you know, just in Amherst right. itself. Right. And that's basically <coughs> the college population. Mm -hmm. and not resident living. I think that's important to bear in mind. Right, it's right. Not, you know, it's not yeah. resident living. People aren't coming here to, to you know, anyway. Sorry. Right. Hopefully they buy houses. Well, hopefully they buy houses, exactly. And we won't know the answer to your question really until probably for the five to ten year horizon until we see the effects of, you know, yeah. those new units. Thing. Um, but then you start looking at all these other ones and how things may shift. Well, it, beg it, beg right. it begs the question in a dynamic population, right? Say there is an increase in organic population. I assume the response is to reduce the number of choice available. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's exactly. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Straight yeah. Forward. Yeah. Right. but then, then he's a kind of jump in here because he's been doing that. Yeah. We yeah. don't right. have yeah. right. We do that every year. Yeah. We do, and it, and it's not only it's not even just a number game. It's a it's a need game too. Yeah. So we look it's at the kind needs of like the Ouija board. Right. right. We, we look at the in. needs of the right. grade level yeah. and say, all right, you know, it's there's no school choice students. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we've done that also. And for that, I, I, I applaud that that kind yeah. of approach to it, as opposed to kind of simply like right. in, infilling by a baseline, exactly, which is which is not good. But how Correct. does the revenue of the town go up? 
when we lose school choice for more students coming in, let's just say, let's say this apartment scenario sure. occurs and there's a yeah. shift where um, there's less students in those apartments and more families in those apartments, the town's not getting more money from the apartments. That's true. And so now the student spaces, the chairs that were making revenue in those classrooms are now great. We have, and it's kind of the, we've said, I've said this at many different meetings on different things, mm -hmm. things. And even when I was on school committee in Pelham, great, we have more residents. Oh, right. we have less income. Sure. You know what <laughs> right, I mean? Because right. we started, we got into the game, right. and we're in the middle of the game, right. unless you, there's a new influx of revenue somewhere right. else, you're stuck playing this game until you can wean off of it. You know right. what I mean? And I'm going to ask the stupid question. How does that affect other sources of funding, like Chapter 70 and other? It affects all of it. That can't, that very much can't, yeah. yeah. Absolutely affects all of it. Right. Which, 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 if I could, if I could pull back to the macro level, right, yeah. from the, the big line budget level, it affects all of it. I don't have to say anything else. Every expense, every bit of it, is impacted. Right. So when we when we come here and we 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 hear and, and we're em we're not just empathetic, we're supportive mm -hmm. of what the, the elementary school has done. From and we were we were in the same room. It's not easy. What the? Uh, but oh, go ahead. But I was say someone's also in a unique position because you have all these resource demands, without. Because of the apartment complex, you have resource demands on, on police, fire, ambulance, that's and not, schools. It's, it's not, that's without not the commercial, that's without the commercial not offset. That's is, not that, is that, is that's that not fair? Not linear, actually. Yeah. But you don't have a commercial offset. Right. It's most, in other to, we're mostly residential. Where, where if you were going to look yeah. at the community of Amherst, where you have you have that those well, type of residents. Well, the community of Amherst would actually argue about how little the colleges actually pay. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> okay, so I won't use that yeah, example. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying, you, there is, you, you have a larger, you have a, exactly right. okay, right. but you have a larger right. demand without the, right. without the commercial. Without the commercial, right. that was just, yes. Yes. which makes it another unique problem sure. for the town. Sure, mm -hmm. so the most, so just to, uh, the most expensive kind of community to operate is single home. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. Single home with water and wastewater. Yeah. And then you, you, you start diversifying the base and what's available, right? We, we happened uh, over the course, of the, the members of the community over the course of generations have made a series of decisions about open space, about farmland, about restricting some commercial and industrial development and focusing on those areas. So we have kind of the middle ground. We don't have a lot of uh, industrial or commercial space, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. Again, those decisions have been made. We also have a fair amount of parcels that are that are simply not on the tax rate. They're on APR. They're in preserved. They're in. They, the they're still spaces. on the tax rate. Though. Yeah, but but but, lower rate. Yeah. but, yeah. but yeah. the open space requires right. you less town services. Bingo. And the, that's the, the, the open space right. requires minimal town services. Bingo. Commercial is more. Residential is the highest. Correct. Right. And it's three tiers there. So we're kind, of, we're kind of in, I think, from a community uh, cost perspective, we are in a, 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 a good space. I would suggest that we're in a good space. If you look at our, our, our if you look at our general costs, we're in the eight plus million dollar range. We have a relatively low debt, but we also have, we also live by the retail checking account of a municipal financing. Right? We don't borrow a lot to move forward. We move forward when we can move forward. And we move forward through, obviously, the, the voter rolls. And we, there was a decision made a year ago to move forward about $200,000 worth. And that move is, is the move that we've got probably for a number of years forward. And $300,000 in any one line, I don't care where it is, 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 is not supportive. We can't do that. So with, now, to Peter's point, I want to circle all the way back. The question is, is there something that is a, a target value of either revenues, town contributions, school expenses? Where can, the, where can the tension be relieved? I'm not entirely sure the town's in a position quite yet, but we will be in the next couple of weeks with regard to revenue stream. We have Governor 1, House 1. It's the only one that we've got right now. Mm -hmm. We know what our local receipts, we have our projections moving forward. We also have a list of expense requests that have come in, and we've set in those budget meetings, both on the capital <coughs> side and on the expense side. So it's clear that education and the town's commitment to education over generations has been really solid. 
Education represents north of 65% of our total operating budget. So when you move that needle, a big jump, everything, everything by percentage gets drawn right up with it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, the, that's the picture from the budget side, global so, budget side. So at the same time, what is our timeline? Because <clears throat> now we're, we're now, because the, the way we're looking at yeah. this is we're going to, in order to go through this, how I, for my vision, and I, the committee can, can jump on and correct me, but we, we're kind of, we're going to need the help of the town in order to make, get through this problem yep. um, without um, decimating the school. Right. Okay. And so what is our, we have a, we have a timeline that we preset, you know, for, you know, public hearing of the budget, which I think we said was the 19th. Um, but that really, we set that on an annual calendar, mm -hmm. right. not on a true calendar of, you know, that is to, that's, that's for, that is for the other committees in the town so that we're all communicating on a timeline. Once we start communicating there, what is our real calendar in the sense of when do we, you know what I mean, as we're, as we're working, as we're financing this budget closer and closer to town meeting, mm -hmm. and, this, and you can get back to, and this can be discussed and get back to, but yeah. what can, the more time we get, the more in, live information we get. As you said, our contracts are, maybe we'll get closer to negotiating the finishing up those, which could have a, could have a good impact on yeah. this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the next the next budget comes out, the new chapter 70 numbers, right. well, it's not going to be huge. Right. It's, right. It, right. There right. could be something. Rural well, aid, maybe we'll get right. saved. Right. Yeah. But it may not, you know. So, you know, know crumbs, crumbs, but I hear but, but there are these all these small little pockets coming forward. We, we would have more live information to use in the budget. So I, I guess what does that time frame look like? Because obviously we're not solving this tonight. No, no. And I appreciate... Unless you brought a checkbook. Yeah, well, no, I didn't. And I appreciate all the effort that's gone into not just the creation of but the understanding of the under, underlying issues. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody nobody goes to work to do bad things, right? Mm -hmm. This just happens. I, I completely understand that. So now let's let's find where that 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 tension can be relieved, and, and we can work toward a common goal. To your answer, with respect to the timeline, three nineteen is is meeting for school committee. The yes. school committee's public hearing of the budget Correct. is that night. So that that uh, we will have uh, some better revenue numbers on our side, but again, I want to bear in mind. I want everybody here to hear, everyone in the room to hear that there's not three hundred thousand dollars in growth annually for any one department. There's three hundred thousand dollars in growth for the entire community. So that said, three nineteen, right? You have an expense budget that you have to develop, and I completely support that. The reality is that we have to post our warrant almost a month before yeah, town April meeting. First, so April 1st. We have between 319 and the first week of April to come together with something. Now, it's, not, it's important to bear in mind as well that the elementary school being a town budget line item is different than the districts. So there have been negotiations right up to town meeting day, right. and then emotions on the floor. Not the prettiest thing, but it can happen all the way up to that point. So I would suggest that if, if the goal is to have a 319 school committee meeting and work on the expense side after the homework, it sounds like you're leaving with are continuing with right. tonight. Right, like I said, th this is a that's a calendar date that we set Correct. in yep. October when I handed yep. out the calendar. Yep. So, you know, this is something that we can adjust that calendar yep. because it's hard, I think it's gonna be hard to have a public hearing on a budget that we're moving forward right. at that particular time. Right. Right. And so we may have to talk as a committee about it can moving be, that it, date. It can be pushed back to all the way to the, 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 the first week of April at that point. Okay. And, and so, pretty, and then try, and then, and then have, that have to be the goal date to have the right. final budget. Yep. But as long as we're, the important, I think, and I think you're I'm yep. kind of saying the, what you yep. guys want to hear yep. in the sense of, is that we're communicating you what the numbers are. The main reason that number is there is that so that the veil gets kind of pulled back and you can sure. see what we're working sure. with. You're seeing what we're working with right now and you're going to see it all the way moving forward. And so that's the, the most important thing about those dates. I guess yeah. I'm saying that more for the camera. So I would, I would suggest your, your drop date is, your drop, your drop dead date is four weeks from town meeting. Hmm. Working backwards. I, I, I just want to work backwards. It, it always seems strange to me that the school committee, um, and it's going back to 
many, I used to come to a lot of school committee meetings when I was doing the finance committee, and the same thing, I would try to come to give them revenue guidance right. and say, this is all we've got, you know, don't, yeah. don't, you know, that's all you, you got to live with it, and so on. But it always seemed strange to me that they would hold the public hearing and then immediately vote on the budget that they had just presented to the public hearing as if it didn't matter what the public <laughs> came in and said. <laughs> so that, to me, it would make much more sense yeah. to have go ahead and have the public hearing on the 19th, yeah. okay? Just realize that we may not vote a budget that evening, that there may need to be another, you know, whether we need another meeting before that, I don't know, but mm -hmm. there may need to be, there could be another meeting after that, that, you know, if we're still, you know, this public hearing, what we got, and if you got any ideas, you know, come, whatever, but we may not necessarily be ready to vote on it at that point. But I don't see a reason to put the public hearing off. No. That's an excellent point, because you yeah, don't have yeah. to vote that night. Yeah, exactly. The There's public no, hearings to, uh, is to get mechanism to inform the public. Exactly, exactly. and yep. to get, yep. get input. Yep. Yep. Both things. Yep. Agreed, Peter. That's a great point. Okay, so but I guess I was under the impression that your public hearing, you want to be pretty darn close to what your final numbers are because it'd be disingenuous to have a different, completely different budget at a public hearing than what you're actually bringing forward. But I think that I, all of this stuff is... Am I wrong on that? I mean, this is my opinion. All of this stuff is... You well, know, we all know it's I think that has been a practice, yeah. but yeah. I, I also have always felt that it was odd that it was like, like I, it almost seems like, right, that the public hearing should be on the early end of it to get input right. from it's the public and ideas and, and sense of priorities um, from the public and then work with that to get to a final thing and, and and then I mean they understand they elected us to to take that input and, and put it into our, our final decision on the budget. I'm fine with it. I guess I'm also looking through the lens of I've been seeing at the frontier table for the last 12 years where, the, <laughs> that, that, where you, that's a very different, you have, a different you, have multiple, you have multiple communities who are right, your deadlines and you can't kind of just right. you know just skip right. along and say oh we're going to change that number right up to town meeting yeah. in four towns it yeah. doesn't really work as yeah. well it doesn't look good to me. <laughs> i would think at the public hearing you'd have a couple scenarios that's what this right. is a best yeah. case scenario this is the right. and this is the bottom line scenario mm -hmm. and so the public gets an idea of what's going to be lost and what's not going to be lost, what's going to be gained, and, and that type of thing. Right, because then you have an idea of the impact of making any given decision. Yeah. And, and traditionally, traditionally, I don't think many people show up. At the right. No. right. That would be a true statement from yeah. somebody who's been to many <laughs> <I'm in there. laughs> You're Usually, it's rarely any more than you see in this room now in terms of representation. But I think that's where it's important to get the public involved at that hearing. This may be a year that we get a little bit more than that. Sure, sure. I sense. would like to see that. What sort of schedule do you want to see for doing this in terms of what you need to do and the time it will take? Um, do you want to have another meeting before the 19th? Don't know, I'm just talking well, about Oh, yeah, and, and I would I would, flip it, I would say. <laughs> well, unless, unless you need a dramatic change, if it's a working session, you know, that, that's why. I mean. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what your, I was. What I'm still hearing, I kind of came in with some questions, and I, I basically still have the same questions. Okay. So, like, one is, how do we reduce the overall budget? I've heard some sm small things, but they're small, and they're, they're going to have, so far, a, a small effect on, what we're looking at, we still have to make, unfortunately, some difficult cuts. We'd also like to know what would the town be able to absorb. Yep. And I, I think we've heard pretty clearly what the town cannot absorb. Sure, sure. But where can, you know, I'm looking at kind of a fiscal emergency. Mm -hmm. What can the town, how can we work together? Yep. And then the third thing is, and I've heard this too, looking forward, how do we make sure that we don't find ourselves in this situation again? Mm -hmm. How do we go through, I think, make some difficult cuts with the idea of going forward, how do we bring back or change or make more efficient what we're doing. I like Bruce's idea about like the two teachers and trying to keep things a little bit more stable. And then I would like, so those questions are still out there for me. I would like before the 19th where we present it, I would like to know where we stand for each of those. Yeah, and to that point I was thinking that we would want to make sure, and to Bruce's as well, we want to give the school team and the financial people enough time to do some of that scenario work. Mm -hmm. So that's part of what the what we could do at that meeting. 
And I would think that even after the 19th, before uh, that April 1st, like when it kind of dropped in, we'd probably have to have another one to, I would think, to tinker with whatever we're presenting and the feedback that we get at that point. Well, and to your last point, I'm, not, I'm kind of running out of fingers to count on how many years we've said, how do we make sure we're not in this position next year? Uh, all, all that aside, you know, you know, we've been in this position many times. I don't know if there's any magic. I mean, well, as we all sit here, I, I don't see any magic solutions that are going to appear or, you know, budgetary unicorns galloping in the door, you know? I mean, it's... The goal that I would have going forward is at least try to find a way to, to get the school choice spending back into a year in arrears. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. for me, but that, that, just that, that, right. a good point. Yeah. that would be mm -hmm. at least uh, a help solid a goal. Bit. Or at least a target of right. carrying 50000 to 75000 right. yeah. a yeah. year, right. knowing that you've Takes got that, that cushion. Yep. Mm -hmm. And a school this size, probably 75000 would be um, a more ideal number, let's say. It's like, I'm just curious, like, go looking back, like, what have been our increases in the SAS budget of the last, like, say, five years? Do we know? Like, mm -hmm. you know, the big one was the, the, the minimum mm -hmm. net school standing. Yeah. That yeah. really drove it up. Yeah. It was 10 years, right there. For 10 yeah. years of the whole town budget. That's the indicator right there why you're in this position every year. Yeah. yeah. I know it's it's going to be hard to change yeah. that. Yeah. That, yeah, that's the hard thing yeah. about yeah. how far can we cut because there's a, there's a line that yeah. we can't go below. Yeah. 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 That was yeah. those numbers. Right. But right. the rest, yeah. the other districts are nowhere near that. Yeah. So that's why we're... Is, are we... I'm going to caucus with my administrative team. Is it the... <laughs> Are we in, I'm trying to, I'm going back to the, the setting of a meeting, are we better off having some time to work on this, create scenarios for the 19th? What happens with the meeting between now and the 19th if we're not getting more information from the outside? So, and then, and then definitely have another meeting between the 19th and then the final doing of the budget. I'm wondering if we, we do more meetings later in the month and more time earlier in the month. Yeah, I wouldn't even be against meeting earlier on the 19th itself, at least. I just, I just think that we are so far from the number that they would most likely be presenting to us. Okay, they don't, they don't know it and they don't feel comfortable, you know, just sort of pulling one out of thin air, but I can pull one out of thin air and I can say it's a whole lot less than what you got on our page, okay? And so, uh, whatever we do has to look at scenarios that do significant things to cut that so number. And, and, you know, that's, that can't be avoided. And whether we also end up with saying, okay, here's one that's got, you know, this level of cuts, and then the next step is this, and then the next step, which gets down to, well, here's finally a number we know the second will buy, but this is what it does. Right. Okay. Right. That's, I think we got to do that. And I think we've got to, um, you know, at some point we got to be out, you know, saying this is what the implication is. So yeah, back, okay, back to for those point. for those two or three different levels, and they have to be serious levels. They can't yeah. just be okay. Great, we got this down from three hundred thousand to two seventy five, okay, and so on. Because you know, what's the point? So okay, now I, again, I don't know what that's going to take. I mean, I can guess, right. okay, and I don't like it, but um, I think we have to start. I love spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, and I think. And, sorry, <laughs> No, but back, back to, to your point, you're in a cox with your team trying to figure out is there a date in between now and the 19th that makes sense, or is it earlier on the 19th or? I don't know what, he, so what you guys want to do, but I, we got we got to have something where yeah, we're starting I, to get real. Right, I mean, I, I do think we need numbers from the town. Mm -hmm. That would be very, that would be very helpful. So our ability to pay. Your ability to, to pay, mm -hmm. um, and if we have had the meeting on the 19th, mm -hmm. you know, that's more information. It gives sure. us a little bit sure. more time to look at plan A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. E so scenarios. I, I like, I yeah. actually like what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I also 
just like what you're saying, we're saying here's a pot of money. Yeah, well, no, just, just, just but, it, it, but it's also as a quick as a quick timeout. We you could also do some scenarios based on if the number came in here. Yeah. Right. This is what we exactly. Right. If the number came in here, right. this is what and, and, and that's what and that's what our A B C D E scenarios yeah, yeah, would yeah, be. Exactly. Right. Exactly. right. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So it, as an order of magnitude, in the last three years, the elementary school budget's gone up. Last three budget cycles, three hundred and thirty-four thousand dollars. Hundred and fifteen a year. Hundred and ten a year. Yeah. Two nineteen and one fourteen and fifty-six. It's kind of like chugged along that way. The order of magnitude is you're asking for nearly that in one year. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of the, the scale and scope. Sure. And so then, yeah. we, we can go back on, on our side collectively, finance and, and uh, administrative team, and go, okay, what available resources are there that are recurring? I think that's really important mm -hmm. to bear in mind. Where the towns that the, historically the town has not, position has been, to use a recurring revenue stream for a recurring expense. Not one time to fill a hole to make a bigger hole in future years. And that's a trap we 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 dig hard in on. We just don't do it. So that said, uh, before the 19th, some available uh, revenue numbers, as, as our revenue numbers get closer, makes perfect <coughs> sense. And then as Peter was saying, I think the, um, scenarios, the words that are being put out there as scenarios, have to have an, an appropriate response, right? So if we do this, this happens. If we do this, this happens. If, you know, and here's, here, is, here, is the, here is the quality of the uh, education that we're, we're no longer willing to compromise. And to do that, we have to have this money. Where does it come from? Mm -hmm. And, and the minimum appropriate for spending. That's right, the, right. Where is the right, right. And we Yeah, I can pull that up. Right. Started States having website. those discussions. Yes. Where does yeah. this come from? Yeah. And you know, it, I'm, I'm not. I'm not in any way, shape, or form advocating. But if you guys have to pony up and and you know dust off your muscle and try to pull off an override, you may end up in that position because we don't have that kind of money for three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Yeah. And and I, I would suggest that the appetite for the public is going to be like, wait. You guys just did this. That's and so kind of getting back to the numbers, yep. you look right. at those numbers, the increase each year has probably been over 2.5%. Correct. And, and, and we, we have to look at these things without, the, the, yeah, without the, even a political bent to it. It's yeah, just, it's just the, the, the reason American those reality. numbers, we, again, the reason those yep. went up like that is because it was, it was lagging on the population yep. the yep. in yep. the school growth. Yep. Right. I mean, it, it, it's still, I, I, we're still below, if you take, I mean, we're maybe at the growth in nominal terms, yeah. at the, the population growth, and that's without any inflation sure. over 10 years. Right. Of cost, yeah. which of course are happening. Right. If it so, was static with inflation, easy. Right. It's not static. It's right. 60 people more. Right. right. And, and so, look, compare what we're spending to what the state says is your required. Yeah. Right. It's so, not like there's a And the concern for me too is... Correct. How long does this trend line go on? Right. So, quick question on um, from the, something that Darius brought up at the beginning, um, and this is just about like uh, um, fiscally or whatever, how it can even even works or or. So, when you were talking about like there were some like kind of one time ish expenditures that are like yes they come up periodically but they're not like year every year like a well, retirement like cost. Retirement. Yeah. So for some, exactly something like that. Can that actually hit outside of the budget that we yeah. present? Yeah. yeah. So it, if, if it's not part of the operating the budget, you can do that inside of a, a warrant article. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Right. Now the risk is you're you're suspect the town meeting, and if there's not revenues, obviously right. we wouldn't put. I would think that no one would put forward a warrant that didn't have an appropriate revenue and an appropriate story to back it up. Right. But more, but more in out. terms of, of like what again getting in line with what you're talking about, trying to present something which does reflect recurring yep. expenses. Yep. Yep. Right, because uh, like, yeah. you, I think you gain more traction and credibility by taking something like that that is not a recurring expense and then not putting that into <coughs> the budget and increasing the budget by 
that amount sure. when you when it's really not. The next year, you probably we won't, we won't need that. <laughs> right. Well, well and except and that we should, be, we should be accruing something right. somewhere right. because that something else. Right. Right. So we right. went through that in the back. But, yeah. but you yeah. had many times. And we took yeah. the capital stuff and yeah. put times. that in yeah. uh, articles. Right. And th this is one. And I hope that people watch us realize that, you know, <clears throat> balancing a budget technically is easy. We could plug a spreadsheet in and walk away and have a budget balance. And this is the stuff that's hard. Mm -hmm. And we need to make, and, and this gets back to getting public involvement and deciding as a community what we want to support, how far we want to support things, and what, what our basic levels are, and what, what all this means to us. Because, you know, despite what goes, I'm just going to soapbox for a moment. <laughs> The last time I checked, it was the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And when the people abdicate and leave things to their leaders, and then complain when things aren't done right, well, you have to get involved. And getting involved means work and unpleasantness sometimes. And that's, we're all sitting here, we know it, <laughs> but, you know, it's very easy to think that there are, and especially these days, that there are quick fanciful solutions to this, and there aren't. It's difficult work, it's hard decisions, none of us want to see things cut for the quality of the education, because I'll make an argument that sometimes that this is more important towards national defense and things like that, and the future and the strength of the country than buying 30 extra tanks or putting more steel on the wall so I can support my buddies in U.S. steel. And I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Judy, do you, can you put together like, you know, two or three scenarios that come in with different, different increases that? Yeah, because basically the workbook on which this budget is built is all linked. Right. So if I just make a copy of the workbook and play with copy one in a certain way, copy two in a certain way, copy three in a certain way, right. I can make changes fairly quickly at this point now that it's built. Because I think that's what I think that's but that'll what we be need. built by I mean that'll be driven right by the way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but then you throw it over the wall and it's gotta like say, well if I really have that to work with what would I have to do? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I mean we'll we'll work on no, that together, can, but in terms of we've already, populating a workbook, yeah. it's not that hard now right. that it's built. I'll be honest we've the beauty of spreadsheets. We Absolutely. have we're not we didn't go Took back and just, build, and just cry in our offices. Right. There may have no, been some right. crying but the but we, I mean, we have, we've had, we've got these sheets already in development. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we're starting from scratch. Right. The the problem, you know, in, in, in <coughs> it's the way we do things. We're in public meetings, but it's very difficult in public meetings to jump right in, get up on the blackboard. I'll give you a list of everybody and everybody's salaries. Totally you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and, right? and then let's say, hey, what do you guys feel like doing today? It, it, it's you, you gotta, you know, there's a there's other rim. We and especially like I said, it's a surgeon. Right. You yeah. have to. We don't want to be overcutting. We don't want to, you know. It, and it's also at the same time, school choice does offset. And at the same time, we have to be calm, cool, and collective, mm -hmm. because you don't want people panicking and leaving the district because right. they're afraid yeah. something might get cut when it was never really truly intended to get cut. Okay. We just had to show it as a number that's later going to get funded somewhere else, and that's a dangerous kind of thing yeah. because papers like to lead with drama sure. and they're going to go with yep. they discussed the cut of this right. they're a business you know what i mean right they're, well, I'll, I'll respect like they, their business but they're going to lead with they're okay. going to lead with they discussed cutting you know Sometimes recess sitting on okay <laughs> and so there is a Sunderland cuts recess and then you know you know that's and, and meanwhile like no we were just discussing that as a possibility that's you know, too late yeah, yeah. Well, and that's well, that's the concern we have with leading with cuts rather than saying what's the full climate what are our time frames? What are different areas we can do to not lead with, you know, certain things? Because sure. it's not there's not a lot of fluff in this budget, as you already know. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, um, and so it's you along, know along those lines, the <clears throat> most important narrative is how did we get here? How do we get here? How do we get here? Right. Mm -hmm. If you if you want to keep those if you want to keep those headlines, you know, being fair and honest and all that stuff. It's like we got here this way. 
That's true, because mm -hmm. inevitably right? that will so, be a question asked. So right? we got to hear this way. Here's an honest, an honest representation of our current circumstance. Different people have different opinions about how we got here, but that's that's all part of it. I understand. Yep. Right. So facts, facts, facts. Yeah. So yeah. facts still do matter. Yeah. <laughs> Despite that's, some it's, people. It's really that. easy. To, it's really easy to defend. We have 60 more kids. Right. Yeah. It's really easy to defend that we've got, you know, programs that are, that are are. Um, uh, that are that are driven or mandated. It's really easy to defend those kinds of things. It's it's hard in the kind of ether of where did the cost growth or come from, without having those facts. It's like where did it come from? It's like well, actually it came from Scott and Peter got together in a room and said, "Damn it, we need to do this right." And that helps the whole process. It helps too, the whole process. It's, it's a whole lot easier to defend right. facts than it is, you know, hiding things. And that's not an accusation. It's just, it's just the point a here is to be open, as you can see. Absolutely. And, exactly. uh, and the only thing that Darius is just sort of bringing is that there are sometimes different consequences of Correct. being totally open about something yeah. Yeah. because. And that's you, a valid point. You know, and yeah. people rightly react to, you know, the right. possibility of things. Right. And right. so it, it, it's a difficult... Because you can't uh, control other people's it's, interpretations it's a of that. It's a difficult situation how to do it sure. in a way that, you mm -hmm. know, you've got requirements of open meeting. I mean, not only requirements of open meeting law, but just a sense of like, yeah, this is a community deciding about stuff, but how you do that while, uh, you know, preserving the, the, the sense of... You know the importance of our of, of every one of our staff and right. every one of our programs and so on. And yes. so, when you talk about things that might do, might be done, it's you know it, it's it's a hard discussion. Correct. I understand. It's, it, it's not just sort of like well, okay, how many miles are we going to pave this year, right. as opposed to not pave or something like that. That's but you know that, can, that's that gets you know some people can get emotional, but maybe not so many. Right, not right. so emotional. They're driving on the roads. <laughs> yeah. That that said. To defend a three hundred thousand dollar increase landing in a single year, you better have a damn good narrative. Absolutely, right? And a damn good narrative has got to be based in facts. Yeah. It can't be fantasy. It can't be we wish or we hope because that's the baseline for moving forward. But I think what you're what you're seeing here this evening. I agree. It's been great. Okay, has not been fantasy. No, I agree. Okay, it's yep. been, you know, this is where we are and this is how we got here. Got it. And the I question is, where do we go from here? That's right. I'd like to say that it's a measured approach to talking about this, and, and that I appreciate everybody coming out as yeah. well, because having been through, this is going to be very difficult, but having been through this in other communities, not any surrounding ones by any means, but it, in, these meetings have been contentious, and I think that I appreciate just um, calm, cool, collective, factual yeah. approach to things. Yeah. Well, that's the only way we're going to solve it. I mean, right. yelling right. and yep. histrionics will not solve budget issues <laughs> at all. And, and, uh, and uh, I, I suspect there will be more than one time a Board of Selectmen or a Finance Committee member will stand up and say, well, our commitment to education is, is not to be questioned for years and years and years. So what do we want to do yeah. for schedule? Well, yeah. if, we, if, we, if we'd done what we said needed to be done in 2010, <coughs> nine, nine, ten, nine, yeah. whatever, People fell over. Now mm -hmm. look, it's a decade later. Right, and well, where are those numbers now? <laughs> Pretty close, aren't they? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I guess, it, so plan, plan moving forward, we have the meeting yeah. scheduled for the 19th. Correct. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the public meeting. Right. Yep. Between now and then, um, uh, we'll be digging into the budget, school budget, even more. On the town side, you'll be getting some, some new numbers. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get you revenue numbers and some target goals. We have a couple of formulas that we follow for mm -hmm. use of free cash. Uh, and again, I think between the Finance Committee as well as the Board of Selectmen and I'll speak to the Finance Committee, uh, we're loath to support recurring expenses without a recurring revenue stream. So we have to figure out what that recurring revenue stream could be. And it could very well be some of the development. We could look at some of those projections. But we need to make sure that as we talk about an expense that is the zero baseline for fiscal 21, mm -hmm. that we have revenue for fiscal 21 in anticipation of those expenses. So, 
you would we'll have we'll have some of those numbers for you for the before the 19th and you had mentioned a date prior to town meeting four yeah. weeks prior what 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 is that date? so our, our our warrant is our warrants developed 21 days before the annual town meeting it yeah. has to be it, so it gets opened seven weeks it gets developed and then it gets posted now we can make modifications on annual town meeting floor to the expense budget very rare to go up on town meeting floor with an expense budget just doesn't it's very rare to have that happen so we have to be in a position before that 21 days of may last last uh, uh friday in may 26 is town meeting right so the the town meeting is the 26th of april correct last sure. friday of april sorry april okay so um, that that yep. said 21 days before <laughs> that where we we have a, a hard and fast right. warrant right. article we're done so if we have the meeting on the 19th um it probably behooves us to schedule a following meeting yep the following week right at, mm -hmm. yep. and then and so that would be the week of the 25th and then that would give us time if we needed an additional meeting yep. to have one Maybe either the first meeting. second third yep. or so it's, a, it's also right. important to bear in mind that if, if there is any discussion about additional revenues that have to go in front of the, in front of the voters, that, that has to happen in the next couple of weeks. We have to notify the town clerk. The town clerk has some post for an election. We have to get it on the ballot. So we have a couple of weeks to make a decision. You weren't deciding that last year until first or second week of April, were you? It's, in, it's the first week of March, right now. Yeah, you got four right? weeks. You got know, four weeks. Yeah, right. Yeah. Four weeks. Yeah. Well, you got a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to develop. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. So I guess while we have calendars out in um, school committee, mm -hmm. is every I guess the question out of that goes back to school committee. You guys comfortable with waiting to the nineteenth? Mm -hmm. See what we have there, and then do. You're basically looking at 19th, that, a meeting that week, the meeting the following week, and the meeting the week after that. So it'll be like three in a row each week as we kind of, as we ask, you know, at that way, at that point, we should have all the information. It's going to be more about discussion of information rather than going back and right. And so, and if you want to do something prior to that, we can do prior to that as well. But um, personally, I'd rather do something prior, but. Mm -hmm. The only reason I would ask for, I mean, you're going you're gonna to be doing the heavy lifting. The only reason I would ask prior is just to know what I'm walking into. <laughs> well put. <laughs> Feel the daisies or yes. phalanx. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is it? I'm going to be away. We can't do it next week. Am I going to deliver the So, I have to figure out. It's going to be a do mm -hmm. I don't right now. Uh, that was six corners. I thought he said six. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, so you, where are we at, Mr. Chair? You probably, you, you, you probably have the, the <laughs> yeah. most difficult. Uh, you you yeah. can't have next week unless you want Friday night. To work around. Or so unless you want to double up or, or do Friday got, night so next week's out. What do you got two weeks from now? Sunday brunch. Um, so we, <laughs> do, we get the 11th? Week of the That's the correct. <laughs> I'm going to be out of town on the 12th, so I would have to do a different day that, that week here. Um, uh, just saying, what's the possibility? You guys could hear 14th is out because we have negotiations. So you're looking at either Wednesday the 13th? The 13th possible or not? It's doable for me. Um, I, let me check it. Yeah. Yeah. I have a budget presentation on Monday to the town of Sunderland. Nice. I don't think you want to skip that one. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> you think we're going to take a pass on that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say what budget it was. <laughs> what budget. I mean, is that, can that be... I don't know if that was put in as a placeholder, or but yeah, because there's just some. Make sure you bring an apple for the top of your head. I mean, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's opportunity for us in there to have those revenue numbers out to you, and that may be an opportunity to to discuss. To discuss. Yeah. So was that the eleventh? Did you say Monday the eleventh? I can make one Monday the eleventh work. I would probably come a little late, depending on the timing. I got to go be part of at least some of the um, middle school basketball banquet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny, it's on my calendar. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be put that there. Um, um, but we would have to have a meeting prior to talking with, uh, with that. Uh, the formal committees that are informally here. You know, I mean, you'll have frontiers to discuss. You may not have the you may not have this entire picture developed, but it's still a really good opportunity to present that order of magnitude, the history, yeah. and say, you know, here, here's where we're at, and we, of course, will have shared revenue numbers and some opportunity prior to that meeting. So, I think that's any time you can any time you can warn the public, it's yeah. a good time to warn the public. So, if you're going to present. You know, the budget may not be this very budget that we see right here. It may be a variation on it, or maybe it is this one. Well, my problem is that the, the administration has a budget, but the school committee doesn't have a budget. You understand what I'm saying? We go back and work on it. It's got to come. But it, it's right, got to go through. But it doesn't. I don't. I don't think it doesn't need to be. You can say it doesn't need to be our budget. It, it could be. It's a work. It's a work in no, we, right yeah. now. I'm pretty sure we've done that before, yeah. where oh, yeah. we've come with the administration budget and start actually and started. With the with the uh, town with it's, that, and then came back and did, and worked. Right. It's right. really important on the expense side, even if it is not necessarily the voted, com, you know, completely voted budget, that we have an order of magnitude to plug in to our global budget to look at where our gaps are. Right. If we wait for the school committee to give us the the, the here, here's our fully blessed budget, as opposed to here's our budget version one. This is our, you know. Well, my, my only comment was that they wouldn't have seen it prior to that evening. Oh. Bring them in. Yeah. Have the same well, meeting. Well, I mean, my, my, the issue is that next I, I week, there's no. I have conflict on the 11th, but that's a. <laughs> oh, you have conflict on the 11th? I, yeah, I oh, yeah. Like okay. Mm. I'm happy with you doing it to them. Well, I just think we need to move this, for, this process forward. Okay. I almost would, yeah, and I, I, to me, I wouldn't. I would say, you know, my my, you know, guidance would be not to come in with a budget. I would come in with uh, maybe here's where we started, which is you know kind of this today, uh, and here's uh, some scenarios that we're kind of trying to work out in terms of options. And we're also would love to hear that there's uh, um, some revenue options that could help us get there. Completely agree. Uh, uh, Okay. We could always cancel. How about? <laughs> <laughs> what time on the eleventh? Uh, what time was it? Six thirty. Six thirty. Oh. Six and six thirty. Yeah. Yeah. We, we can we could massage the scheduling time to accommodate. We okay. started at six this week. Right? We did. Yeah, yeah sort of. Yeah, that was kind of strange. I'm not entirely wow. sure why I wasn't available. But did you leave? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's at the time right, to get out right. of the office. It's the same way. It's hard to get out of the office. That's what the 11th is for two weeks. I'm not going to do it. Less hangry. Otherwise. Yeah. 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 Mr. Chairman, can I raise this totally separate issue while they're thinking? Yeah. Uh, the, Town caucus is next Monday evening, I believe. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And I think Doug, you're the only one up for re-election, and I just wanted to mm -hmm. confirm that you were happy to stand again, and if, so that if just in case that wasn't the case, then it was a sense of like, okay, we gotta try Fine. to yeah. try yeah. to. Yeah. After me, like this one, like, probably you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so much fun. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> You're still on. <laughs> you turned on the end until. <laughs> I know. I mean, until, yeah. So I think it runs until the end June. of June. Yeah. yeah. Um. Ah, uh, it depends on who you ask. Uh, <laughs> in the house. Uh, you or your wife. <laughs> yeah. You have to take that one into committee. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I think if there That's was right. somebody out there in the community who was kind of, it was interested, I mean, this is the end of my third term. Um, and I think it's good to kind of, I think there's good, it's good having some continuity, which is why I've stayed on for three terms. I would probably serve longer, but I also think it's good if there was uh, somebody out there who was interested um, in joining it that, you know, to, to have that happen. So I, um, I just realized, it just, yeah, came to me actually like, um, yesterday or something that that was coming up, uh, and, um, and, uh, like just looking ahead in the calendar and seeing right. the town caucus and going, Oh wait. Um, so I haven't like, I, you know, Cancel this park reached out to find out if there's people out there who are like kind of been thinking about Getting on the See all the fun you can do. If, if, if I could, so there's your your non-answer answer. That's answer. <laughs> part chair, of this meeting. I, I would suggest that getting through your third term, you just got all the facts you need. You're hitting your stride. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Third term, you guys. You're on your game. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So okay. You know, okay. Yeah. But so, I it, it's it's been uh, yeah only mine for the last. So it sounds like you're going to get renominated. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Just don't tell my wife. Uh, yeah, if, uh, <laughs> if anyone's super interested, yeah, yeah, then I think let us know. I would. Okay, yeah, yeah. and likewise, if you know somebody who is super interested, <clears throat> I am certainly not opposed to kind of <laughs> stepping aside. So, while we're doing planning, it, it'd probably be good to get to get that early April meeting on the calendar because as you know April is a joint meeting month to reduce the number of meetings for the superintendent. <laughs> um, that's on the fourth. That's on the fourth. So um Thanks everybody for your work. Appreciate it. Likewise. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, what were, uh, were their thoughts on um, other times? So it needs it needs to be before that, right? Before the fifth, right? <coughs> right. I'm pretty flexible. Darius, you said the week of the twenty fifth, you're not available. Oh, what mean last this month? March. March. No, no, no. Um, hmm? uh, did we decide on the eleventh? Well, I don't. We haven't. Well, yeah. My understanding is that so we have a oh, we had this kind of penciled in with them, and then. Do you, I was. I was yeah. under the assumption that the entire committee was invited to this meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. That's true. All right. So that's right. how I ended up on true. my calendar. So does um, it make any sense to schedule a school committee meeting like just before or just after that? That's what I was wondering. With the Fleckman? If we could do that. And that's what I'm saying. I can't so you won't be there. I can't be there. So but that doesn't mean we can't have a quorum. I don't know. I don't know what's useful and what's not. And I mean, the, my and that was my. And I know you just left, but the, that was my concern with the eleventh. Is that while it's good to have them there in discussing with Nagat for both full committees, it's. I don't know. It, to me, it's 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 opening, 
we need their information, but at the same time, when you're talking about um, we, the lion's share of the of what the scenarios are, will be presented at that next meeting, or, or or not. We I mean we don't we don't have to do it there. We can do it at a different meeting. But you're asking us to go out, create scenarios with percentages, and what does it look like step by step, priority wise, and most surgical moving forward? You're going to have to digest that comment on it and that kind of thing. And so my only concern is with doing it with three committees all at once, you know, I don't know. It, it, it's, that's, it's their committee meeting. It's not yours. And so, yeah. you know, you, 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 as chair, you don't have control of who's, yeah. who's weighing in on what kind of thing. And I just, it's, to me, it's the, be, I hate to say it's the most important meeting of your lives. <laughs> no, but you know, in, in, well, certainly of this year in the sense of. So the 19th is the, is our presentation to the select board. What's the purpose of the 11th meeting? No, the, no, no, the 19th, 19th is our public, 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 public so hearing, there's our normal school committee meeting. It is an excellent question. It's something that maybe in the long term we can fix, but right now what we do is we do a public hearing of the meeting, but we also go and bring our budget to the select board and the finance committee. And they don't necessarily coincide with when we have the public hearing. So. And for instance, this time the, the day I you know I tell them when our public hearing dates they get all that, but they're they're working on when they have their meeting schedule. Mm -hmm. So in, in an easy budget year that's not a big deal, but in another budget year sometimes it falls out of order. Mm -hmm. We haven't approved a budget and a budget hearing and a public hearing, but we're giving the budget to and the the mm -hmm. to the finance committee and the select board. The past few years that's happened the Monday or Tuesday after vacation or the Monday after vacation. Going to the selectmen. Yes, that's correct. Late yeah. the latter part of February. And again, it's last night. Right, it's one of those. It's one of those things that's where you have tradition versus, you know, because the other side of me says, "Well, why have a public hearing or invite the select board?" I mean, in we, I write a letter to each of the boards and say, um, "Please come to our budget hearing." But they're saying they're kind of no. You come to us and present the budget. So it's kind of one of those things where nobody, nobody on the school side wants to be rude to the public. You know, those kind of things. But Waitley had a public, had us go last night. So I was at Wheatley last night to their select board and finance committee, but Frontier hasn't approved a budget yet. So I was sitting there and I said, I can't give you Frontiers because the school committee of Frontier, the school committee hasn't voted their budget yet. They're doing it Thursday. So thanks for having me. We went over to elementary and that was a productive conversation. But it's one of those things where it's just it's kind of it really we really need to clean up. It needs to be cleaned up, and especially in the sense of just to make me whine for a minute. You know, I got to do that four separate times. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then I got to go four separate budget hearings meetings, and then four separate. It's kind of, yeah. it's like you know, it's tiring. It's yeah, and at the same time, it's as we said, it's really it's good to have finance committee here when you're talking about budget right. at our meetings because it's and you know, the problem is they would like to have the same conversation, really, okay, at their meeting. To give it, and they, you know, more people probably watch the TV of their meeting, and it's just another way to get the word out that, you know, that here's the general situation, even though, you know, so you could say there, you know, we've got a couple different areas that we've got to be making progress on, okay, and one is figuring out, you know, the level at which we can, you know, different levels perhaps of a budget that you know will then have to match with what we end up being able to you know have revenues for but the other one is just also informing people about the situation and how we got in it and so on and so their meeting on the 11th is to you know make progress on that one okay because Scott was saying you know people the more people need know about you know what the situation is how you got here what the facts are and so on you know, he they consider that very useful, even though it doesn't give any facts about a solution. Right, but, but when I was, we were talking about it there, I said, "Do you? What do you want us to bring? We won't have met." They well, but they said, "Bring your administrative budget." Right. And my question is, is that the administrative budget that we're working on that you have not yet seen? And that's where I was getting to feel. A See, I don't. A I don't comfortable. I think you. I don't mind, personally. Yeah. I don't mind if you go in there, and you say. You know, here's stuff we're looking at. Okay. Okay. That that causes me no problem, personally. Um, I, I, especially I think if it's in the context of, you know, if you said to us, 
you know, there is no way, no how that uh, there will be, you know, more revenue available. And so that means, and there's no, so then, and thereby there's no way, no how that, that your budget can go up by $300,000. Um, then, um, then this would be the implications of that. Right, Th yeah. that this uh, or or these are here. You know, here are possible implications of that. You know, that in terms of like what that really means, like what what could possibly be cut or or you know how we right. prioritize that. So, I get that that we want to be careful about what gets mentioned to the public, and uh, you know what setting off panic. Uh, I do think that it's it's maybe important. To move the process forward and, and keep them involved in the dialogue, and and I agree with Peter. We can say, you know, here's a range of if you've got your scenario stuff, it it, it may not be a number, it may be a range, right? And I, and I actually where I'm, and where I'm struggling with this is that okay, so because I know what will what we're going to create, so to speak, and, and where maybe it can be adjusted, but this equals one percent. This equals two percent. This equals three percent. And what this is is a program and a yep. cost. A yep. program and yep. a cost. A program and a cost. Yep. And what may be the school committee's job is to decide whether or not that's acceptable or not. And if it's presented at a joint meeting, the other voices are going to influence the decision of the school committee about what's best for the school. Because I'll tell you what, some of these costs. I'm going to say the town should vote on it if it goes that far. Mm -hmm. It's it's got to go to an override. If you're going to cut that much, we won't do it without going to the town well, people because it, it gets to that level. And it, we're not there yet because it, I, mean, I don't have the numbers in front of me to be this passionate yet. But I know I've seen what the numbers are, yeah. Yeah. and so that's kind of where uh, I, I sense that. I mean, I'm I'm, a, I'm you know my gut is assuming that that maybe there's some things, but that it's still what we're looking at is is some numbers that either uh, um, we have a a better than uh, um, you know, the, an increase in revenue that that you know would would help, um, or you know I would be in the same position of I would be I would I would vote for putting that budget forward and let it you know and see if the town will support it with with another override if that's what's required, um, I, and I think in that process we're actually we would benefit working closely with the select board because in my, I think in recent history uh, when we're working honestly and openly with them then they're working honestly and openly with us to try to you know to try to, to stop the problem to, to exactly. take it forward to the public and, and um, I know if we buck them we will get shot down like and I think that if you go I think it if 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 that any possibility and clearly it is I mean, and, you know considering like okay go back and ask for you know, an override, okay, then the case for that needs to be made and it needs to be made starting sooner rather than later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't just show up at the last meeting and say, okay, I guess well, we, then we want you to go for an override. That, I mean, last year they were discussing that, you know, for a month of meetings, right. okay, yeah. every meeting and sort of like, basically you have to get comfortable with something like that. You have to explore the, 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 the alternatives. You have to sort of say finally, okay, we got to do this. And, and you don't just do that in one evening. For the overrides, that was a big difference from last year's to the year before. Yeah. Where it seemed like the, the, the year before they just sort of tossed it, like it out. last minute. Right. 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 And it didn't give even the school a chance to kind talk of to the PTO right. and get the word out to the school. Right. So I think that if yeah. that's going to be on the table like it should be, yeah. okay, and um, you know, one thing I was saying at the beginning of this meeting was because of the mistake and what we thought we had, that we ended up with a number for the override this last time that wasn't the number it should have been, and so, you know, that's a reason for going back because this is what we should have done the first time. And, and I want to reassure uh, you too that uh, but I don't think we're going to get bullied into, into something in a, in a group meeting where, you know, we're going to... Collectively, we're going to figure out what's the responsible thing to recommend. To right, and I, I need, let me show you because yeah. we're on camera. I didn't say the word. No, 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 I no. just meant in the sense no, that no, your sorry. voice, your yeah. voice is yeah. uh, the voices when you when you yeah. add it to fifteen people yeah, you're talking I, about a subject. Yeah, yeah. You I guess you have diverse opinions, but you lose voice just by number of people. But, but, but also, I've 
you know, last time through March and April, I sat in a lot of selectman meetings, and they were very um, open to yeah, I mean, me or other you I'm know, not, group I'm people not, I'm not still arguing. Right. It was just my original thought yeah. to make sure that everybody right. was comfortable with that before yeah. no. we moved, we you did that because it is. And you guys have been through this longer than I have, and, and this at this level, so you know, it's fine. I was just bringing it to the attention that was the one concern that if we're talking about different things and someone says, well, what does this mean to this program? And, you know, um, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not investigating each yeah. and every line as yeah. easily when you have 15 people who yeah. have different level, they have level of interest, but your level of interest is supposed to be more keen on each yeah. line rather than just the percentage yeah. and the number. A level and of so interest and a level of understanding. Yeah. Right, right. Right. Yeah. So, so you back, understand like, the yeah. ramifications of what happens because you understand but, what the programming but, but is. But we're also sport. we also have, and you could tell in the discussion tonight, we have we have board selectmen that's very knowledgeable about this stuff. Yeah. We, you know, they've been around for a long time. <clears throat> they are both knowledgeable and sympathetic and desirous of a you know as good a school as, as, as we could have, and so. We don't have a bunch of enemies up there. It's right. just a matter of, you know, making. I, I think actually going at that meeting and making whatever case and, you know, moving it forward, whether you've got, you know, you don't need our blessing to just say, here's the stuff we're thinking about. And from what I, you know, I think, well, from what I can see, you know, we've got to have about this amount of money and there's only one way to get that. Is, is and if that's the case, then, that need, then you need to start making that case sooner rather than later. What what about and I and I realize you know the the town has one big pot of money but they kind of you know say you know this amount for this area so on and so forth as far as cap capital projects are concerned is is this a year to potentially not do submit a copy of capital project so, the, well, you can answer oh again. Uh, I know, th as Scott says, and this is a, a wise and a good thing, that we don't want to uh, have recurring expenses, but uh, we don't have a recurring source of revenue. So, yeah, you can always put off for one year a freeze, and a, a delay. Right. But... Uh, the capital, I mean, that yeah. that is that actually is funded uh, separately. Mm -hmm. yeah. That, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so, yeah. I mean, they've actually done a really good job of... Um, setting up a way to run the finances so that a certain amount of money is generated each year and earmarked for capital stuff. It took okay. many tries to get it there. And it takes, and it takes <laughs> discipline to do that. And then you can't, you know, and then you sort of ruin that if you take some of that and you toss it against an operating expense one year because then your starting point the next year is that much different. Okay. But there is a dedicated, there's a dedicated, dedicated revenue stream. Revenue stream right. towards the capital expenditure that that is. Right. But it's, it's a fair point. Maybe we, that gets left to them a little bit. I mean, but we can nice. we could put that out there. But I don't know if it'll. I don't think because I don't think it. But there's always. I mean, the unknown is that some amount of. Essentially, if you're doing your municipal budget right, you end up in a surplus position each year, meaning you generate some free cash. Okay, because you don't want to be. You know, you don't want to be coming up short. Okay? You, yeah, you still got free cash, but you basically want to be in a surplus position. So at the end of the year, you're closing free cash position at June 30. When this, when you do all the books and and the state certifies it, ideally your free cash goes up. Okay, and maybe it goes up by hundred thousand. Maybe it goes up a couple hundred thousand. In some years it goes up three hundred thousand. You know, who knows? Okay, but that's money. Then some portion of that goes into capital. Okay, and some portion. Uh, can go into, uh, you know, just savings, and then some portion can be used to help offset the mm -hmm. operating budget. Now, you know, whether that number that can go into the operating budget is 50000 or 100000 or something like that, it's not 300000 or it's not, you know, whatever. But you know, that's part of the discussion, mm -hmm. okay? The overall revenue, seeing what new growth is, that's part of the discussion, okay? But I think it's to our advantage, actually, you know, more I think about it, to go to that meeting, and we're not going in there with a with a with a proposal, yeah. okay. We're not going in there with a this is what we want kind of thing. We're going in there to educate, okay. To say these are the kinds of uh, here's what's going on, here's how bad the problem is, uh, you know, 
it seems to us like, you know, here's what's going to be needed to, you know, and it may be that we say, you know, well, we got the number down from 300 down to 250 or something, and, you know, but beyond that, you know, mm -hmm. and you could say, I mean, you could talk about, I think you could talk general terms about, okay, it's staff and programs without, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's, 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 that's what there is. I mean, you're clearly not mentioning names or anything, but yeah. you could say staff and programs, and that starts a, that starts a trend, you know, that starts in a direction you don't want to go. Eventually. And then you just say, you know, you just say, you're the superintendent, and, you know, my obligation here is to, to you know, get the best education for this district, and, the, you know, at this point, if we're not talking about override, we're not doing our job. So I think that we should be there. I don't think we need to. Extra meetings for you as well. I, mean, I, I think yeah. at least. Oh, no, I wasn't worried about that. Was yeah, no, 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 but that would but accomplish. I, I think that is a concern. I, I think that would accomplish also a sort of bit of crystallizing what the situation is. Yeah. If there's, you know, it's not going to be a finished budget because I, I, I do what Peter said about the town, um, sorry, um, public comment. You know, we can't have a finished budget even then, really. There might be some tinkering because right. you don't, you're not going to have the vote there. I think having scenarios. Mm -hmm. Legitimate scenarios, um, treated respectfully because we know it, a lot of this is going to be programs and personnel. It has to be done the right way, um, and I think that a majority of, of, of this body can be there to support. And, and I think we do have. Uh, we're lucky that we have a, a, a select board that is, um, like I said, willing to work with us. I mean, I've sat in these meetings where students were referred to as widgets. You know, in business, and like that was some of one of the ugliest things I've ever participated in. So this, to me, is is, a, is a, at least groups that are willing to hear each other and work together. So mm -hmm. I think that we should be there. The next one would be public comment on the nineteenth, and then we'd have to settle it up after that. So you're saying look at calendars the evening of the nineteenth to yeah. see where we're at, and potentially and schedule another meeting prior to yes. April if, if needed be so for me the, right. that public comment I just wanted I, I for me I'd like to see where we're at you know be able to explain it defend it and see what, what's going on and I think the, the 11th would accomplish that from for, from my perspective sure. okay. and I think it's good there also to be very clear about Stuff that's already being planned, and they may not be big things, but anything's being planned that is like, okay, we're trying to do this to save some money, and this to save some money, with that, you know, stuff that we could do that gets us more efficient without, you know, hurting programs and hurting, you know, what we offer to the kids. And so, you know, there are a number of things that, you know, we're talking about to try and cut the number down, but they aren't in the ballpark of what, you know, is what's needed. Right. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And, and the fact that it's not a finished product is no problem at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, is that 6 o'clock on Monday, the 11th? It might be. Uh, the only thing I'd it say says is... It 6.30 on my calendar, so... Yeah. And, and usually they have a, whatever appointments they have, they schedule, you know, I mean, I, if we want... You I have mean, if, if we, we say we want to make it 7, we could tell them at 7, depending on what your schedules are. I don't know if that gets. We just want town hall. What's that? That's a town hall. Yeah. yeah. Or I can do Frontier first and. Oh, that's you. Either way, you're there. See you tomorrow. You'll have a Frontier budget by then? We have, we have one now. Yeah. How big is. Well, I'm not going to ask you that now. We've got anything else to do? Motion to adjourn. Anything else you did? Anything else you wanted? It's the only topic we got. Okay. Tonight. Okay. Uh, there you go.